All right, so this is baby real analysis problems. This will be problem 10. And I've taken this from Jay Cummings, real analysis along for mathematics textbook. Now I will say that for this problem, I wasn't able to find a solution anywhere to verify that my proof is correct, but I believe my proof is correct. I mean, I'll have theorems and corollaries that I'm justifying the steps. And so those that are watching, if there are any holes in the proof, feel free to comment and state where I messed up and what, what to correct. So that's kind of like, a, um, and just forewarning. Um, so I'm not 100% sure it's a correct proof, I guess is what I'm saying. And that just really comes down to my self-doubt. Um, and because I couldn't find a solution anywhere online for this problem. But the uh, exercise is exercise 3.19. Uh, 3 so it's chapter three, problem 19. And the problem says, suppose you have some sequence a n for which a n converges to a. To find a new sequence for the nth term, b n is basically the average. Um, so we have a plus one, or a one plus a two plus dot 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 plus a n divided by n. We're going to prove that b n also converges to a. All right, and here are some theorems and corollaries that I'll apply in the proof. So we have the standard triangle inequality. And then we have a corollary of the triangle inequality that I'll apply. So when you add up in amount of numbers and amount of terms, A1 plus A2 plus AN, that's less than or equal to the absolute value of A1 plus the absolute value of A2 all the way up to the absolute value of AN. And then I'm going to apply a theorem that convergence of a sequence implies boundedness. So if a n converges, then a n is bounded. So in other words, there's uh, some m in the real numbers such that the absolute value of the a n is less than or equal to m, and that's for all indices n. All right, so these are the theorems, corollaries, and stuff that I'm going to apply. And so proof. So suppose we have a sequence a n such that a n converges to a. We're going to define b n by doing a one plus a two all the way up to a n divided by n. And so we wish to show that Bn converges to A also. And so what, is, what does that mean? So this is if and only if for all epsilon, there exists a capital N such that we're all little n bigger than capital N. We have the absolute value of bn minus a to be less than epsilon. All right, that's just definition of convergence. This is what we're wishing to show. All right, so we have a n, so given epsilon, Um, we know a n converges, so since a n converges, a n is bounded. So there's some real number at m, so there exists a real number m such that the absolute value of a n is less than or equal to m for all n. We also know that since a n converges to a, then there exists a capital N 
in the natural numbers such that for all little n bigger than capital N, we have that the absolute value of a, a n minus a is less than epsilon since we know that. Well, we can use triangle inequality and boundedness to have the following. So we have the absolute value of a n minus a that's less than or equal to the absolute value of a n plus the absolute value of a, triangle inequality. And since a n is bounded by m for all n, then this is less than or equal to capital M plus the absolute value of A. And all of this needs to be less than epsilon. So this is less than less than epsilon. So we know we know this. Okay, so um, let's see. So we need to show that B N minus A is also less than epsilon. Well, Bn is a1 plus a2 all the way up to an divided by n. So when I do Bn minus a, absolute value of that, that's equal to the absolute value of a1 plus a2 all the way up to an divided by n, and then minus a. And by triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to the absolute value of a1 plus a2 dot 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 plus a n divided by n plus the absolute value of a. And we know that this is going to be less than or equal to if we put out the 1 over n because the de denominator, so that's less than or equal to 1 over n times absolute value of a1 dot 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 up to a n and then plus absolute value of a. Then by corollary to the triangle inequality, so applying applying this, we can de deconstruct this or decompose it into being less than or equal to 1 over n times the absolute value of a1 plus absolute value a2 plus dot 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 plus the absolute value of a n and then plus a. Well each of these a n's, each of the terms of the sequence a n is less than or equal to capital M since it's bounded. So we could say this is less than or equal to one over n times, so that's bounded by m, m plus m dot 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 plus m, and then plus absolute value of a. Well, we're adding up a bunch of m's, and there's n amount of m's. There's n of these because we have n terms. And so this is really equal to one over n times n m. Since there's n of them and then plus the absolute value of a. Well, then 1 over n times n, those cancel out, so you just get m. So really, this is equal to m plus the absolute value of a. Well, hold on. So, so we have capital M plus absolute value of a. And by the definition of convergence for the sequence of a n, we already know that this is less than epsilon. So we can say that this will be less than epsilon using the n for convergence of the sequence a n.
right? And that will complete the proof because we essentially got it down to the string of inequalities to state that Bn minus A, we did all this work and eventually got it to be less than or equal to M plus the absolute value of A, which is less than epsilon. <clears throat> 